He's gotten into fights with both Presidents Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Biden calling him too toxic to touch. And people in Trump's circle have said he would destroy all competition if his company wasn't addressed. We're talking about Amazon founder and former CEO Jeff Bezos. And Dana Mattioli is the Wall Street Journal's Amazon reporter. She has a new book out this week. It is called The Everything War, Amazon's ruthless quest to own the world and remake corporate power. And it has some details about Jeff Bezos you probably haven't heard before. She is joining us live now. Welcome, Dana. Thanks for making the time. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's start with Bezos's beef with both President Biden and former President Trump. Uh, you describe a very contentious relationship, saying that both Biden and Trump despise Jeff Bezos. Tell us more about this bad blood with the White House. So it started with President Trump, where there were a few things. Um, he was obviously very angry about Jeff Bezos's ownership of the Washington Post and their investigations into his campaign and his leadership. So that started things off on the wrong foot. But also when he would go to rallies in different cities, he would often hear from small business owners who said that Amazon is decimating their main streets or it's making it impossible for them to compete. So that really stuck with him as well. But the main thing that comes up when I speak to Trump's top aides is that he was jealous about Jeff Bezos's wealth. And that was something that came up time and time again during his presidency. Interesting. Okay. I, I appreciate that insight. You know, and Bezos also has a Twitter spats. It's called X, so I guess we can call them X spats <laughs> now. Uh, but Bezos beefing with President Biden and members of Congress, the White House calling Bezos too toxic to touch. Would it be worse for Bezos and Amazon if Biden or if Trump were in the White House? It's pretty fascinating. They were really bullish about a Biden presidency. They were well positioned because they had a Obama's former spokesperson to head up PR and government relationships um, for Amazon, and it's backfired. Um, they got into fights with active politicians, including President Biden. And, you know, Jay Carney, who headed up comms, couldn't get an audience between Biden and, and Bezos. And he, he kept, Biden kept inviting, you know, Walmart CEO to the White House instead, which really got under their skin. And we're at the position now where there's a lot of rhetoric out of the Trump White House, but not much action, whereas Biden has, you know, not only shunned Jeff Bezos, but also has put his biggest foe, Lena Khan, at the head of the FTC, the agency regulating the company. So it almost feels like a Biden White House might be worse for Amazon. Interesting. And tell us a little bit about what we don't know about Jeff Bezos. I know you, you interviewed hundreds of people for this book. I did. And I think what comes across is that he has, you know, uh, there, he's created this culture at Amazon that has unintended consequences. There's behaviors in the book that are truly shocking. And it all stems back to this culture that Jeff helped create. There's a scene in the book early on when he tells his early employees that they lack his killer instinct. And he goes on to hire people more in his image. And that's the company we see today, that there is this killer instinct where they crush anything in its path. And that's part of why it finds itself in the middle of this monopoly lawsuit. You know, in the past, the government broke up monopolies like Standard Oil, and I know you make that comparison in the book. Could we see the FTC do that now with their case against Amazon? And do you think that that is the right step for the country? I mean, we absolutely could see that happen now. Uh, the case mentions structural, structural remedies, which means a breakup. I don't know if they're actively pursuing that as their first option. Um, and I think, you know, that would help address some of the issues that the agency is identifying. But at the end of the day, the people I've spoken to have said, you know, this company has grown for 30 years unfettered. Would it be too little too late? Dana Mattioli, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.